Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good evening. It is the Earth Master out here, along with my uh, beautiful co-host, Missy Mimi's. How's it going there, Missy? It's going good. How's it going with you? Going excellent. Hanging in there. Uh, doing about the best we can out here on this Saturday night. Kind of staying safe out of the craziness of the world right now. Uh, let's see. Uh, what is it? Saturday night, February 25th, 2023. It's about 10.03 in the p.m. out here along the west coast california and the uh, latest earthquake shows a 4.9 out here uh into the philippine trench it looks like of course we did see that earthquake activity into the japan region 6.0 earlier this morning uh that was followed up a couple hours later by a 6.2 this originally came in as a uh what was this wasn't it a 6.5 or something if 6. i remember 6.4 6.4 yeah so, no six point it was 6.5 so. so it did get downgraded uh, a little bit to a 6.2 but we have noticed uh some adjustment going on here back behind it uh, which makes sense a couple fours around the solomon islands area and also some activity going on around new zealand and the tonga area all very typical along this area of the plate boundary due to the westward uh, plate movement out here. Let me bring up the map here from the USGS. Stand by for a second. Uh, over the last, uh, again, over the last 24 hours, some really good adjustment up here around the northwestern edge of the Kuro Kamachaka Trench, or northwestern edge of the Pacific Plate, excuse me. And uh, that has kind of worked its way down here across the western edge of the Philippine Plate, and we're getting some adjustment, obviously, as noted on the Earthquake 3D globe. So, uh, when these areas move here, uh, there's a couple different directions that it could go. Uh, the adjustment could take place back over here. Uh, now that we got that westward pressure movement here, things do adjust further backstream, or we'll see it cluster over here around the Philippines. And it's just been all over the place today, as uh, far as movement goes. Uh, a wide area of up of uptick across the Pacific Plate, adjacent plates here, that includes the western area again of the Philippine Plate. You can see it. I mean, you can pretty much draw an arrow uh, across the globe here of where the activity has kicked up. <clears throat> uh, so with that being said, definitely got to watch some areas along the Kermadec Trench south into the New Zealand area, um, considering all that westward pressure movement. All right, the Solomon Islands area did see some movement here this um, this evening within the last couple hours, including one within the last hour, uh, 4.8, the most recent quake. Very shallow earthquake movement. Uh, there is that 6.2. We have seen a little bit of aftershock activity following that. that looks like quite a few fours kicking up there. And uh, also, as noted, there are a couple uh, earthquakes along the Tonga Trench. 4.7 coming 30, in. 34.7 kilometers. That was, uh, when was that? That was earlier this morning, actually. 12 o'clock, but thank you. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah, New Zealand is showing some activity as well. A couple threes down here. And uh, let's see what is being reported there from the GeoNet servers. Uh, let's see. They're still showing two days ago. Not for sure why, but you know, there's been more activity than two days ago. So there's a uh, 3.3 two hours ago into the, uh, it kind of looks like the Hikarangi subduction zone with the depth of that earthquake, almost 200 kilometers deep there into the subduction area. And looks like some other smaller quakes in there as well. Uh, South Island area. Let's see what we got for the earthquake drum. Uh, it may not be super active right now, but uh, definitely noteworthy to watch here for some further movement down into New Zealand, considering uh, all this activity along the Pacific, the Western Pacific Plate. Here's the last 24 hours of earthquake activity. Kind of been seeing that. Uh, last night as well occasional two or three and most of this movement here has been confined to the south area south island new zealand um, as noted here across the graphs around the <coughs> philippines area oh that's not gonna work <laughs> that's a that's a, okay let's see here one of the things about a wireless mouse is sometimes if it's too far away from the the bluetooth little um What's that called? A little USB thing? Yeah. Yeah, it won't work. So <laughs> it was all choppy. It's like choop, 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 choop. kind of hard to work with that. Uh, so yeah, Taiwan area seen some movement. Couple fours and um, 
Looks like some of this activity from early this morning spread out throughout the afternoon time period. Like I say, it's been a pretty active day along the uh, areas of the Western Pacific. Coral Islands, um, it's at 4.4 coming in early uh, this morning, it looks like. That activity following the six-pointer down here off the coast of Japan. Overall seismic activity, uh, got to watch this region pretty closely here uh, for some larger scale movement. One area that's kind of going along with all the uh, momentum and the uh, westward pressure movement out here is going to be, uh, let me make sure I got everything we're recording. Yes, we are. The Mariana and the Izu Trench up here, kind of just uh, quiet. And it's even quiet on the globe here from the EMSC model. Notice nothing really being picked up here across this region. And this area does see some uh, some earthquake activity Supposedly, it's supposed to, uh, but today, very quiet right now. Um, <clears throat> let's see what else we got going on here across the area. Turkey still rocking and rolling out there. Can't catch a break, it seems like. Uh, quite a few fours and even a five from early this morning. Uh, nothing else really showing up across the Atlantic area as far as the USGS goes. Look at the EMSC model. We do have a 4.0. Uh, looks like it's into the India area. Um, another one of our watch areas. Look at all that movement here. It's just it's come to a halt right about here at the Java Trench. So uh, this could start to show some signs of uh, further activity soon. I just uh, it's kind of pointing towards this area like an arrow would. Uh, so we'll watch this region pretty closely here for some further movement. Three point six. A little odd earthquake down here into, uh, I believe that's southern India, right? Yeah. Southern India area, 3.8 coming into the Turkey region right now. And a little bit of activity scattered out and about the Mediterranean region. There is a 5.1. I think this is an older earthquake. Um, let me see when this was up here. It looks like uh, 9 o'clock. Was that from last night? Uh, early, maybe early this morning. Possibly. Let me see exactly when that was. <clears throat> um, UTC time of 05, and that would be today's date. So this is, yeah, definitely an older quake from this morning, it looks like. Um, and that's being reported there from the USGS in the Atlantic, but not on their map here. See that? Yeah. Kind of weird. Alrighty, uh, South America region got a couple smaller earthquakes throughout the day today. Some fours kicking up there, and uh, let's see what we got uh, on the EMSC model. Some um, some twos in there. Some deeper movement quakes as well. It's an area of watch here as well because of all the uptick and uh, of course that clutter earthquake, cluttered activity here around the Middle America Trench. All uh, all making this globe look very active today, that's for sure. Let's see what we got for the west coast here. We got a 1.4 coming into the area of California right now. <clears throat> and that is, uh, well, 1.5 down here around the Ocotillo Wells area, it looks like. Oh, goodness. Let's see what's going on. Okay, 1.5. <laughs> this mouse about ready to throw it out the window <laughs> might be time for a new mouse maybe. or maybe just a regular wired one might work huh you tend to work one. better yeah but that one's that one's a little Jeez. crazy don't, as well it don't help either uh so what do we got is that 2.4 coming into the yeah. ridgecrest area just within the last hour it looks like uh West Coast, not a whole lot going on. I mean, there's obviously some earthquake activity, and that's very common. Not uh, not showing any real signs of uptick out here that I can tell. Northern California area looking fairly quiet for the most part. The last earthquake was a 2.7 down here into the Northern California area. Uh, let's see what we got for trimmer out here tonight along the uh, Cascadia. Looks like about 227. Most of that up around the Vancouver Island ranges. Um, well, yeah, between there and uh, the Seattle area, it looks like. And a little bit taking place here into the southern end of the Cascadia. 
Uh, let's see, up into the Alaska region after all the activity here from yesterday. All that momentum and movement has kind of shifted here west, leaving the Alaska area a little bit quieter. Not seeing too much in the way of swarming activity out here today. Kind of makes sense on why the west coast is so quiet. We've got a lot of movement on the other end of the teeter-totter effect. If yeah. you think about it, the western part's moving, the eastern part's quiet. For now. For now, exactly. Let's see here. What else we got? Uh, the big island of Hawaii. Not a whole lot going on up, out here either. It looks like about uh, 10 earthquakes or so. Uh, so we'll see where, where this kind of takes us here. Um, with this haltage of movement across the Java Trench, uh, I believe that we should see uh, that break free here and switch over along the Java Trench here soon. Again, the westward, uh, northwestward plate movement indicative here of the Pacific Plate, putting a lot of strain on these regions here. Uh, the western edge of the Philippine Plate, Kurokam Chaka Trench, obviously. So just kind of a, a busy day here, folks. Very busy day. Not a whole lot going on across the eastern portion of the country for now. Uh, got some severe weather setups for tomorrow, it looks like, around Oklahoma. So stay safe out there. Be weather aware if you are out there in that region of the Southern Plains. Yellowstone National Park. Not a whole lot going on. As far as earthquake activity goes. Uh, there is the six-pointer from Japan earlier this morning. And let's see here. Where is our six-pointer in... Um, the Papua New Guinea area that should be showing up here on one of these graphs. Yeah. Possibly might. could be this one right here because it was a couple hours later, right? Yeah. But, uh, yeah. All right, let's see what else we have. I think that's about it for uh, earthquake activity here. There's not, uh, like I say, not a whole lot going on across New Zealand currently, uh, but keep an eye on this area because what goes on up here westward, northward, does play a part on this plate boundary so we'll continue to watch that area uh, for some movement um, space weather activity we did have a long duration M flare kickoff earlier today that is the M flare right here peeking out at about uh, M9 uh, no M6.3 it looks like but notice the width here indicating that long duration uh, event it did hurl off a CME but not earth directed there's currently a proton event going on at the higher latitudes here uh, across the polar regions. That is the uh, uh, charged particles entering into the ionosphere up there, creating some radio blackouts at the polar regions. A lot of times uh, when the solar flares pop off, we get uh, that centered over the sunlit side of the Earth. Uh, but there's definitely some charged particles out there coming in, uh, I believe from... Um, a, uh, from that coronal hole that we had seen here a couple days ago. But either way, it's a pretty drastic uh, proton event. Continued 20% chance of that uh, happening, but obviously it looks a little bit higher right now. There's a G2 class storm being forecasted for the 27th, and that is from uh, that is going to be from that, uh, that CME that was produced here uh, a couple days ago. It was a, uh, I believe it was this one right here that basically a, a filament eruption along with a subsequent long duration M flare. And again, that's coming from this sunspot. So it was positioned just a little bit further over here um, on the left side of the screen. Now it's obviously moving off towards the western edge of the sun, but when it was in this position here, it did blast off a, uh, a nice halo CME. We may catch the glancing edge of it, and that's kind of what they're forecasting here for the 27th time frame, UTC time there. Let's see what the detailed forecast looks like. Um, so this is going to put this event at uh, tomorrow night. Because the current UTC time is going to be 0226 and 06. So roughly 
this time, or pro probably actually prior to this time, uh, because between zero and six, it looks like is when uh, uh, it's supposed to be in the forecast. And we're at six right now. So yeah, sometime tomorrow night when it gets dark, uh, it's gonna happen or it's not. Uh, most of the time, these near misses have uh, definitely just completely missed missed us com completely. <laughs> if, I, if I can spit that out, goodness. goodness, it's been a long day. It's not even over yet. So watch for that uh, unsettled conditions. It looks like forecasted tonight, and again, G two class storm tomorrow. Right now, things are very minimal. The auroras are not looking likely up there at the higher latitude. So just. Uh, wait for tomorrow see how it plays out and uh, let's see here let's look at these flares structure of them this is the one that has produced now two long duration M flares one of those today one next to the filament eruption a couple days ago and the X 2.2 that kicked off last week so this has been a very active uh, solar sunspot region. It still looks fairly dynamic there, a lot of intermixing, kind of hard to tell, but uh, anything that does blast off should not be geo-effective due to the location there on the sun. We do have a pretty large sunspot up here, but it's separating. Um, it's looking like it's uh, not going to be all that promising in terms of producing any significant flares. It's a large sunspot, but it, again, with that type of setup, not likely. And these regions down here look a little disorganized as well. So we'll just continue to watch this. 99% chance for a C flare. M flare at 15 or uh, 65 and X flare at 15%. And of course, a proton event ongoing there at 20% probability. Uh, I think that's about it, folks. I'm um, going to call it a night here. Um, maybe not yet, but uh, soon. Yes, soon. <laughs> Lots of homework tomorrow. Yeah, a lot of homework did today for school, and we got a lot tomorrow as well. So, um, got to write a huge essay. Um, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's just going to be a headache. So, but either way, it's got to be done. So we'll go with that, and uh, just stay safe out there, folks, and have a good night. Three point one, a little bit of, a little bit of activity working its way westward here across the area. We'll continue to watch this. Of course, if anything does uh, pop off in the large-scale event, we'll uh, jump on and do an update here. Have a good night, folks. Uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend. We'll catch you back here sometime tomorrow morning. Have a good night, guys. Happy to be on and say hello to everybody as well. Right. I figured I would definitely drag Missy Mimi's on. Uh, let her jump on and say hi. I'm sure a lot of folks out here miss hearing that voice of yours. And <laughs> You know, it's definitely good to jump on and say hi to the folks on occasion, right? Very much. <laughs> Alrighty. Have a good one, guys. We'll catch you a little bit later on. Stay safe. Good night, guys.